Hey, it's Philip again at the Best 3D. Um, I wanted to show you another example of uh, how the motion prediction module can help you create some uh, slow animations out of a short, quick animation. Um, this is what I have here. A couple of different renderings. Uh, six is the six frames per second. It's only two seconds long, so a total of 12 frames. Very short. And um, this was rendered in a 3D program, my favorite, Koara 3D program and um, let's see actually I rendered a few at 30 frames a second and even 50 and, and at 60 I went and enabled the global illumination as well. So we have a fairly quick uh, two second clip here or there and what we'd like to do is really turn it into something that's uh, even longer like a 10 second clip or something like that. So times 5 or times uh, uh, 10 times uh, longer. Uh, perhaps also we want to crop a portion and so we don't need to necessarily have everything in the background or in the foreground. Maybe there's more that you can clip away. But the, the most important part is how can we make it smoother without the side effect of just pure uh, frame blending. And with that what I mean is if, if you load the AVI and um, let's say we take let's say we take the uh, 18, uh, 18 frames. Okay. And 18 frames per second, total of 36 frames. As we scrub through that or if we play it, um, and then you say, okay, let's go right click here on the timeline or go to the animation menu. Same thing, you got the, the frames menu and you can go and time stretch it. Well, when you time stretch it, let's say we want to give it five times more, or six times more, apply that, and also frame blend it. Right. In fact, to accentuate it, I'll give it only two or three times more, and then we'll see a little bit closer what's what's really going on. Uh, let's say three times more. Okay. Oops, that's actually not as many as I want. Let's well, let's say, let's say three hundred frames. Okay. So when we do that, we essentially take each frame, and as we go from one frame to the next, you can see a ghosting as it's blending from the current frame to the next frame, and there it is, and then it blends in. And then it's ready to go to the next frame. And then so about five, six frames later, it goes to the third frame. And so it, it gradually blends from one to the next one. And when you play that, it does a weird roping or, or stuttering effect almost. And you see that especially in the high contrast areas, like down here where these holes are. It, it kind of crawls. It's like almost like a snail going across there or a little... A caterpillar, right? What's the movement that a caterpillar does? There's probably a verb for that. Sort of a crawling effect and it is really because it's blending from one frame to the other in five or six steps. Uh, let's see, we can find one probably where it's not blended. There's, there, there it is, there's one with just one frame and uh, and then the next frame, so we, I'm on frame 111 and I'm going to the frame 112 and uh, there it is, it's starting to show the frame 112 and then more of it and more of it and it's not moving anything it's just blending or transitioning from one frame to the other All right and that's what the motion prediction module is going to try to solve uh, it's going to address the need to move pixels from frame 111 to frame 112 as it looks at each pixel or a block of pixels and tries to determine where that thing has moved to so uh, now if it moves too fast it may not catch it because the the motion prediction basically it's a tracking mechanism you know you got a little block of pixels and we're going to track it and see if it can if we can determine where it moved to uh, in its neighborhood so uh, just like with a motion tracker where you have a search area in which you're going to try to find the block that you're catching or and tracking um, you have the same feature in the motion prediction module. So uh, I'm going to go and reload that original, what was it, 18? 18, 18 frames per second. And I'm going to now to the filter animated and the motion prediction module. Right. And so with that, let's see what we can do. Let's run it in dry run mode and uh, we can skip the scanning for pro dropped frames because there are none. Every frame is different from the others. And let's go render that. Okay, so it's going to give us 103 frames. We need probably more. Uh, let's give it let's give it uh, seven times. So 239. All right, already looking pretty good. Let's make it really slow. Let's give it uh, 22. So 749. 
And now we can see there's some areas up here occasionally where it's missing. And then here in the front too, when it's moving too fast. Let's see. Let's give it uh, 28. There you go. So we're building this out to 953 frames. Look at the bottom here. There's some areas where it's going to move too fast. And uh, because of that, it can't really track and find it. So, so what you want to do is adjust. This here is the adjusting of the search distance. You know, how far to look for the next appearance of a particular search block. How big are these blocks? Well, you can see that uh, if you adjust it here, the grid spacing, right? With that, you can set the spacing or the size of the grid of each, each block that's being tracked. And you can go down to pretty small size, all the way to a 2x2. Two two. Um, let's say we want to go to 6x6 six six and search area a little bit bigger and no subsampling or anything like that yet. Let's see what that does. We still have a couple of areas here that are kind of iffy. So that's really where the, the, the magic is, the, the trick is to, to find a good balance for the grid spacing and also let's give it maybe 8 or 9 here, 7. Um, I have a hunch 7 might work. <laughs> and, then, and then sometimes you may need to also do a stochastic averaging of neighboring uh, frames. That will take a lot more time but uh, it may give you that additional quality. Right here we still have a little bit of that roping. Um, so let's see if we if we give it a refinement pass at uh, at zero level. So that's going to take additional time. Yeah, it still does it. Okay, so we're not quite there yet. Um, that's really where the trick is: is that we need to to find um, perhaps a larger size, perhaps a larger distance. Um, let's do a quick render there. Yeah, still has it there. So this may be a case where it's just moving still a little bit too fast. Most of it here looks really darn good though. So let's see what else could we try. Well, let's, let's try the stochastic, um, <coughs> which will average. Yeah, that actually looks a little bit better. Uh, still one or two. All right, so maybe stochastic 15. Let's try that. Yeah, you can still see it there. All right, so sometimes what you need to do is uh, experiment and, and try a few more combinations here. Uh, shorter distance, uh, smaller grid size. Now let's try that and go. And then of course um, the refinement pass can also add. So if you combine all these here at some point you may hopefully find a parameter that works. Uh, a set of values that will give you uh, really nice transitions. Here I just seem to not be able to do that. So uh, maybe with 18 frames per second we're still not quite there. It's gonna be better though especially if you end up actually not needing this background. If you're going to actually crop it out all right, so let's let's do this. Let's give it the highest quality here. Let's go back up a little bit. Um, I don't know, maybe. Oh, you know what? We didn't try the three by three or close to that. I doubt that's going to be it in this case. Yeah, it still has that roping there. So let's give it search distance smaller. Let's try that. Ooh, that looks better. That looks more promising. You know, sometimes uh, it's because there is a repetitive pattern and it, it jumps too far if you give it a search distance that is too far. But then on the other side, uh, if, if, if you don't give it enough of search distance, it might not find it either uh, for those parts that move really fast right in the front here. So, but let's let's give that a try. Let's, let's go and render that and go. I think we got all the parameters we want. Let's, actually, we didn't need 950 three that many. Let's give it, uh, what was it, about 12 times? 400 still too many by comparison with what we did earlier in the frame blending approach. Let's give it just uh, nine times there. Yeah, 300 or so frames. All right, now we, we focus mostly in this area here. That looks like it addressed it. Uh, we may have some glitches. No, so far so far so good. In the front here it's pretty good too. It's not moving too fast. It's able to track it. So we seem to have reached a, a good search distance and a grid spacing that works just fine for that. And that's it. Rendering done. And so now the first frame is actually replicated from the last frame. So we can toss that. Well, let's go delete that 
and we're pretty good. And to keep in mind also, remember that the, the frame area, there's a, a, a region, a margin where it's not actually working right, and you might want to crop that out. It's very thin though in this case because I had the grid spacing down to three pixels, so uh, it's barely visible. Um, anyway, what, what this amounts to basically is now that we have a uh, an animation uh, interpolation with motion prediction that uh, probably will look better than if you if you were to do this with just frame blending. And then of course if you if you crop it in the end and uh, you know if there are still some trouble areas in the front or at the very back, uh, those you can eliminate by clipping on crop. It. So uh, let's let's go save that and then compare with the frame blending approach and uh, perhaps do a side by side. In fact, what I'll do is I'll I'll crop. Um, let's say I'll I'll go right here and select my take my rectangular selection. Let's enable the alpha overlay and I'll do something like this here. All right. Uh, let's move it down. Control down a little bit. Let's scrub it through. Uh, that's a little bit too high. It's gonna come close here. Maybe I need to make this a little bit bigger. Um, something like this. There you go. Alright, so what I'm gonna do here is crop to that. Crop to that selection. And now I can go... Oh, before we save it, let's make sure it's got uh, even numbers on the image. Yeah, see when you manually crop, you often have odd numbers, so you may need to trim it down by one or two pixels here. Uh, let's go and image resize, that's a good way to do it, resample down just by one, so let's constrain it, and, oh, 639, let's go up to 640, yeah, and then this one here we don't want to keep as an odd number either, so let's make that a 672, a 272, there you go, let's give it the best quality on the scaling interpolation by cubic plus, okay that, so with that, we will have an animation that looks pretty darn good, done with the motion prediction module of PD Pro 7.2 Plus. This is actually a version slightly beyond 7.2 currently in development. And uh, let's go and clear the alpha. And so here's our animation. And now I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to do uh, the same uh, number of frames. What's that? About 305 frames. Uh, and do the same one with frame blending and do a side by side. So let's go save that.